Ken Kreitzer for Sons of the American Legion Radio at the Navy League in New York City, and I have a chance to talk to a British officer, and that is Colonel Mark Maddock from the British Marines, and it's a pleasure to chat with you uh, today. Tell us, if you would, sir, a little bit about the British Marine Corps, its similarities to the U.S. Marine Corps. I know it has a long, long, uh, distinguished history. Yeah, well, the, the Royal Marines is actually this year celebrating its 350th uh, anniversary, going back to 1664. Um, the Royal Marines is a much smaller version of the U.S. Marine Corps nowadays. Uh, sit at about 7,000 people, uh, and it puts a combined arms brigade out into amphibious operations. So in that much, it's very similar, but in its size, it is very different. Uh, and it draws upon a lot of its sort of combat support and its combat service support from the Navy in a not dissimilar way uh, to the U.S. Marines does using the U.S. Navy, but on probably on a, on a different scale. Okay, and you've served uh, uh, since 1985, I understand, and uh, uh, you've served around the world. Tell us a little bit about uh, the, your career, some of the places that you've served. Well, in the early part of my career was, is, was a fairly traditional career for any junior officer uh, in the military. Um, I suppose my career became more interesting um, with the advent of the, the conflict in the Balkans, and that was probably my first operational tour outside um, of, of Northern Ireland. And that was working um, in Bosnia um, and also in Kosovo um, in the immediate, uh, the immediate environment following the breakup of, the, of Yugoslavia. Um, then took a relatively quiet period um, until post 9-11, uh, where I was involved in working um, in the International Maritime Staff uh, as the lead amphibious in planner for the invasion of Iraq. And fundamentally there I was involved in the, uh, in the planning of the the Royal Marines amphibious operation into the Alpore Peninsula. Um, I then uh, moved into UK security, which kept me out of the, the, the operational overseas deployment path uh, for a while. And then more recently, um, I, I've worked in the UK's uh, Joint High Readiness um, head, Headquarters, which is a, a sort, I suppose in some ways it's a a deplorable part of one of your COCOMs is it would be equivalent organisation. Um, and during that time, uh, the Arab Spring uh, erupted, uh, and I found myself dealing with evacuations operations uh, initially through places like um, Egypt and Libya. And then uh, towards the end of my time in that organisation, I was deployed uh, as a military advisor to the uh, the, the rebel coalition forces in Benghazi, uh, which really was, for me, was a, a major highlight of my career, a fascinating time uh, to work with um, in such a dynamic environment, which would made such a difference uh, to the, the people at the time and their aspirations. And now you're working in New York uh, with the uh, uh, United Kingdom uh, uh, Committee at the UN, working uh, with NATO as a military advisor. Uh, what is that? What is your current uh, occupation? Uh, have you involved with? Yes, and uh, well, I'm now operating as the UK military advisor to the United Kingdom's mission uh, to the United Nations. And what, what's that really? I suppose I'm a defence attaché. In reality, I'm a defence attaché to our ambassador to the United Nations. I'm there to provide him with military advice on uh, activity that the UN is involved in, whether it's UN peacekeeping operations or crises, crises that are taking place on a global stage that have got um, uh, have military issues associated with them. So that's what I'm there to provide advice on. I also, um, as, a, uh, as a member of the Permanent Five of the Security Council, I sit on uh, an organisation known as the Military Staff Committee. And this is a permanent subcommittee of the Security Council. And it's where we sit um, and we, we look at the military operations that the UN is conducting uh, and provide advice both to the United Nations but also back to uh, the Security Council on how effective they are and how useful they are. Colonel Mark Maddock from the Royal Marines here in New York, thank you for your service. Thank you for the amazing cooperation and coordination uh, uh, that the British military has with our United States military. Thank you very much indeed. This is Ken Kreitzer in New York at the Navy League for Sons of the American Legion Radio.